this lesson, we're going to learn to calculate the five number summary for an even number of data points and use the five number summary to construct a box and whisker plot. And if you watched the previous video, we did it for an odd number of data points. And this will be a little bit different, but same process. The first thing that we need to recall is that what the five number summary is. And the five number summary consists of the minimum, the maximum, the first quartile, third quartile, and the median. And you can see I already took this data and organized it from smallest to largest. So it's already pre-sorted for us. So it's real easy to identify the minimum and the maximum. Our minimum is going to be right here at 33. Our maximum is going to be over here at 96. And I'll go ahead and label these down here because I'll need them later on. So our minimum is equal to 33. And the maximum is equal to 96. And then the next thing we need to find is our median. And our median is the middle number when a data set is ar arranged in order from smallest to largest or largest to smallest. And we have 16 data points here. So that means the median should occur between the 8th and 9th data points. So if I count over 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, our median should occur right here. And if you were to divide this data set in half right there, you would see there's exactly eight numbers on the left of that line and exactly eight numbers on the right of that line. These two numbers we have to average together to find our median because it's going to happen in between those two. So we're going to have 51 plus 57 divided by 2. And when we do this division, we come up with a median of 54. So our median value is 54. Now the next thing we need to do is find the location of our quartiles. And we're going to use this formula right here for finding the location of percentiles. And we're going to use that. And if you recall, a quartile is really the same as the 25th percentile. So when we say the L sub 25, we're talking about the 25th percentile or the first quartile or the first quarter of the data. And this is going to be equal to N. I said there's 16 data points. Our sample size is 16. So this is going to be 16 plus 1 times 1 over, actually I shouldn't use 1 fourth, that's, that's what it'll be re reduced to, but it'll be 25 over 100, which reduces to 1 fourth. So this would be 17 times 1 fourth, which is equal to 4.25. And what that means is that our first quartile is going to occur just after the fourth data point. So we count that up, 1, 2, 3, 4. Our, our first quartile should happen somewhere between here, 45 and 48. This is where Q1 lies, but we don't know exactly where. So what we first need to do is we need to find the distance between those two points. So I'm going to say, okay, 48 minus 48 minus 45, and this is going to be the distance. And I'll just abbreviate DIST. 48 minus 45 is 3. And then we have to find how far over that is, okay? So we take that distance, 3, and we're going to multiply it by this, this fractional value of 0.25 because it's 0.25 away from that first data point, which is in that quartile, which is 45. So 3 times 0.25, or 0.25, the distance of 3. And when I multiply those two numbers together, I get the value of 0.75. Now to find exactly what that first quartile is, I take the 0.75 and I add it to this 0.45, which is the first value of those two. So Q1 is equal to 45 plus 0.75. So Q1, the first quartile, is equal to 45.75. Now we do the same thing for the, for the third quartile as well. So I'm going to draw a line so we have our work separate right here. So this would be the location of the 75th percentile. And this is equal to 16 plus 1 times 75 over 100. And when we do the math on this, this is 17 times 3 fourths. And 17 times 3 fourths is 12.75. So that means that th this uh, third quartile is going to occur just after the 12th data point. So when we count this, these up, this is 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So that third quartile will happen between the value of 78 and 83. And again, we have to find the distance between those two values. And we're going to use uh, this value right here. And I'm sorry, I forgot to write the 7.5. This should be 12.75 right there. So we find the distance. And this is simply going to be 83 minus 78, and that is equal to 5. And then the next step, we have to look at this last value. It's 0.75 away from the 78, so we have to find 
basically 75% of that distance. So we're going to have uh, 5 times 0.75. And when we do the multiplication on that, that's 3.75. The distance away from this value of 78 is 3.75. So, so to find our third quartile, we are going to take that 78 and we're going to add 3.75 to that. And when we do that, we get our third quartile as being 81.75. Okay, so those are our values of our first and our third quartile. And if you happen to use Excel 2010, um, the command for this is actually quartile.exe, so I think that means quartile exclusive, but I couldn't find that anywhere when I was looking through the help to see if that's actually what that means, but it's quartile.exe is the same formula that would be used for this type of process right here. Now we're ready to go ahead and, and figure out uh, what our box and whisker plot looks like. And again, we have this uh, graph right here with a scale, and what we want to do is we want to label this. These are our x values or our data points. We want to label our scale. Our scale, our minimum value is 33, so we should either start at 10 or 20, and I'll just start at 10 and count by tens. So this is 10, 20, 30. And once we have the scale labeled, we can go through and we can start looking at the, va the values that we have for our minimum, our maximum, our first quartile, and our third quartile, and doing it on here. And like I said before, what I like to do with this, I like to do these as vertical lines so I know where um, the box is essentially going to lie. So our first value is 33. So 33 is approximately probably right here. So I'll do a small line for the minimum. Then my next value is my first quartile, which is 45.75. So that's going to be about halfway in between 40 and 50. And I don't have this uh, scale is small, small enough to really represent the 0.75, but that gives us the general location. The next thing I need is my median, which is 54, and that's almost halfway, so about right here. And then the next value to finish our box is the third quartile, which is 81.75. So 81.75 might be about right here. So now I can construct our box, because the box is made up of the first and the third quartile, and it has the median in there. And then we have to draw a short line for our maximum value, and our maximum value was 96. So 96 would be a little over halfway between 90 and 100, which is about right there. So that gives me the stopping point for our whiskers for this box and whisker plot. Now the last thing we should probably do is label each of these values. So my minimum value is equal to 33. Q1 is equal to 45.75. And this is going to get a little crowded, but my median, which is the middle number, is equal to 54. My third quartile is equal to 81.75. It's supposed to be a decimal point between there. And then my maximum is equal to 96. And I think it's important to have these values on there so that way uh, you can clearly see what's what's on the graph and um, and look at this visually. And this gives us a good idea of what the distribution of that data looks like to determine whether or not it's skewed data or symmetric data. And for the most part it looks pretty symmetric except for it looks like the uh, the median is more towards the left of the data set, so it may be slightly skewed. Um, now the last thing, you know, like I said before, you know, the, these data points right here, if you think about it intuitively, um, we have eight data points on each side. You could probably guess that if we divide it in half, our median would be somewhere between these values, and you could estimate it pretty easy. So we can find those values simply by inspection, just like we did in the previous example. We could kind of go through and take a look at this and take a good estimate of what those values would be. But these formulas are really what gives us the exact values for our quartiles. And remember, quartiles don't have to be a precise number from that data set, whereas the median is usually a number from there, but sometimes we have to average the middle too. So hopefully this helps you get through your assignment, and good luck.